G'day everyone, welcome to Inside Rugby. My name is Mark, I'm a Kiwi rugby fan living here in beautiful Cancun in Mexico. And in this video, I'm gonna share what I think we've learned from that epic final game in this year's 2024 Six Nations competition between France and England that was played in Lyon over the weekend. Let's get into it in this video. G'day everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been here before, welcome. I'd love you to continue to join us here on this global rugby community we're building all the way from beautiful Mexico. So why not get on board? And the best way to do that is hit the subscribe button, of course. And if you do like this content, give us a bit of a thumbs up and all those other things that help the algorithm on YouTube. Now in this video, I thought I'd have a look at the England versus France game, the last game of this year's Six Nations competition. What a game it was, absolute thriller. And uh, I'm pleased that we had that type of game at the end of the competition because I think it's left us all now feeling like we want a lot more rugby. So rather than go through my usual review of a game, I thought I'd throw this one up a little bit differently, have a look at some of the key statistics that happened in this game that I thought important, and then just give you my take on what I think we've learned from about France and England as we've gone through this year's Six Nation, particularly in this last game, as it gives them both momentum as they go into the next series of games this year in 2024. Now let's start off by looking at some of the stats of the game. If you haven't heard the final score, France 33, England 31. It was an absolute belter right down to the last second and uh, a good game of rugby as well. England scored four tries, France scored three tries. The difference was the boot of Thomas Ramos. He scored 18 points and George Ford was able to get 11 points in this particular game. But let's have a look at what I think were some of the key stats of this game. And there might be some numbers here that actually surprised you and uh, we can work out why France probably ended up winning this game. So if we start off with the number of carries in this game, 125 to 65 to France. And uh, they had ball in hand a lot and they were putting a lot of pressure on the England defense at different times of this game. This also obviously sapped a lot of the energy out of the English defense and I thought that started to tell. So looking at turnovers, five apiece in this game and uh, it was pretty obvious with the back three that we had in the forwards that we we're gonna get uh, quickly into those breakdowns and Aldrich, Olivon and Krull for France were playing really, really well I thought, as were Underhill, Earl and also Ollie Chisholm for England. So uh, turnovers five apiece, and uh, that doesn't surprise me in terms of one of the stats that comes out of this game. Now moving on, territory, 57% of the territory was for France, 43 to England. So France had an opportunity a lot more inside England's territory, and uh, they probably made that account on most of occasions they visited the England 22 in particular. Set pieces were always going to be interesting in this game. Scrums ended up being three all and line out 17 to France, 15 to England, so not much in it at all. We saw a couple of bad throw-ins in the end of the game from England that didn't help them too much. But uh, overall, I think the, uh, the forwards really matched each other pretty good. We didn't see that total domination from the French reserves when they came on, although I did think they made a difference. And I think Fabien Gaultier is, sub is onto something with that 6-2 bench that he's now got for France. So discipline was something in this game that uh, we had to take a look at and it came down to the penalty count and England got 10 penalties against them, France only 5, so double the amount of penalties. So infringements were high on the English side and of course in that last two minutes of the game it cost them dearly. A 10-5 the penalty count against England, something they need to watch going forward I think. So looking at the tackle count in this game and England made 140 tackles. France made 77 and I'd have to say that normally you would say that uh, a team making twice as many tackles will get a little bit tired towards the end of the game but that wasn't the case it appeared in England they were still running strong at the end of this game so they appear to be very fit their bench did the job as well to keep them in this game and uh, it was just down to that last indiscretion and that penalty kick from Thomas Ramos. So there we go, there's a summary of some of the statistics out of this game. Some interesting ones there I'm sure that you'll find. And now I want to talk about each of the teams and what we learnt about these teams, particularly from this last game. Okay, so let's have a look at France first and some of the things that uh, I think have stood out, not only from this game, but in the last couple of games for France. 
and it's really two men and their positional changes and it's Nolan Ligarek who came on at halfback of course for the last two games and uh, what a difference this guy this young guy has made absolutely fantastic and played really really well in both of those last two games for France and I think outside of Anton Dupont France has found their solution as a backup halfback and it's great because uh, I haven't been a big fan of Luku and uh, I think having Luku coming off the bench is a good thing for France but when Dupont is back and Dupont and Le Garic can go together that's going to be an outstanding halfback uh, combination for France and then outside him we saw Thomas Ramos come into number 10 of course in the last two games for France and this made a huge difference because not only have you got someone there that's constantly reliable with his kicking boot but he's also igniting this French back line and we saw a different way of France playing and it was because Ramos was distributing that ball but he also got good service from Lee Garak. So putting the two together I think has really made the difference for France in the last two games of this campaign. And I tell you what, if I had to have someone kicking a goal for my life depending on it, it would be Thomas Ramos. What a job he did in the last minute of that game, kicking that goal, staying cool under pressure and this time he had no Cheslin Colby trying to charge the kick down. So a wonderful job from Thomas Ramos. I think he played really well in number 10. Of course, Intermac is going to be back soon for France as well. So as they head into the rest of the year, um, they're going to get some of their stronger players back. So Dupont will be back after the Olympic Games. Whether or not he plays in the campaign for France towards the end of the year, it's going to be interesting. I think they've got test matches against uh, Argentina, Japan and New Zealand coming up. So there's going to be some interesting ones. I think Australia is in there as well. So uh, it'll be interesting to see whether Dupont and Intermac are back for those games. But I think in the meantime, La Garac and also Thomas Ramos moving into the number 10 jersey really made the difference for France. And I think that's something that we learned from these last two games about this French team. Something else about France that's been really noticeable for me throughout this campaign is BL Berry on the wing. He has to start as far as I'm concerned. He's an absolute game changer. He's electric when he gets the ball and he also can kick and chase those balls fantastically. And we saw in this game, Damien Pinot at probably his best so far throughout the Six Nations. He was absolutely brilliant. I don't know how many meters he made, but he was running a lot, breaking through the English defense and causing all sorts of headaches for the back three in England. And that's exactly what Damien Pinot does. So I think between Biori and Pinot, France have two of the best wingers in the world going around at the moment. And those guys need to start every game for this French team. And what I like about these guys is that even when they get the ball in a defensive position, they can turn it into an attacking raid and they can get this French team going forward. And that's exactly what you want from your back three in this game. We also saw Leo Bardi make an appearance in the last two games for France. I can see the potential with this guy, but when Thomas Ramos goes back to fullback, because of uh, Intermac coming back into the team, he might have to go onto the bench, but I think he might be a much better uh, choice on the bench than Mofana, perhaps, for France. We'll have to see how that one pans out. But from France were playing around with their forward combinations during the campaign, and we saw Mifu come in for the last few games, and boy, what a find he has been for France at lock. I think he was the answer that uh, Fabien Gaultier was looking for. Not only was he immense in the set pieces, but we saw him on a number of occasions with ball in hand, making some boistering runs upfield. And uh, I think we're going to see a lot more of Mifu. So as I said in other videos about France, I thought Cameron Wokey hasn't been living up to the level of play that he was playing in last year's Rugby World Cup. So it was good to see Maf Mifu uh, come forward with Flamand. And uh, it looks like France have got two good locks. As I said in the statistics, they did well both in the scrums and also in the lineouts against England this past weekend. I thought the front row for France had been playing very well. Antonio, I think, had an outstanding Six Nations this year. He was massive in the scrums, winning a couple of big scrums in different games for France, but he was also big in the loose again this year. For such a big man, when he gets the ball, he makes some devastating runs and he sets the ball back really well for the next phases of play. And uh, I thought I think a lot of people would like to have Antonio in their team as well. Malvaca was coming off the bench in this series, and that was interesting for me. He's a very much an impact player for France, and I think that probably suits a lot more for the way that France want to play the game. And uh, I think he was a great addition to this French team coming off the bench. And of course, we had the Taya Fanua brothers as well. And boy, what an impact they made. And I think that whole French bench coming on, the forwards coming on in the second half 
of those last two games for France really made an impact. It kept them in the game against England and gave them momentum to go forward. But it also gave them a lot of emphasis in their second to last game as well. I thought they did really, really well against Wales and they were able to set that platform up where France scored those last three tries in the last 20 minutes against Wales. So the uh, the bench for France coming in uh, in those last two games I think was a huge plus for Fabien Gaultier. I think he's found an answer there with the 6-2 split. It's working with this French team and I think we can expect to see a lot more of that going forward. So in summarising France, I think uh, a few of us were concerned about the way they started the Six Nations. They were thumped by Ireland in that first game. And then they just didn't look like themselves, did they, until the last two games. And then finally, that last 20 minutes against Wales and again against England, they really kicked into their spontaneity type of play. That's what we love from this French team, or I do anyway. And uh, it can cause any defence in the world a real headache when they start playing like that. So as long as they got their forward platform sorted out, and I think they're getting much closer to that now with the uh, direction that Gaultier is going with some of these new players are outstanding. I think as they build into that for the rest of the year, they're going to be a very, very dangerous team and expect them to move up in the world rankings, rankings from their current number four position because I think France might cause a lot of teams a lot of problems later on this year. OK, moving on to England and what did we learn about England in these last two games of the Six Nations? Well, when they decide to play rugby, they can be a different looking team, can't they? And I know that there's a lot of English fans out there that have been wanting to see this for quite some time. And uh, finally, it's kicked into gear. And what I think's really happened here is I think it's been generated by the, the passion of the players to change the nature of the game. I don't think this is a Steve Borthwick thing at all. In fact, we've seen Steve Borthwick in the way that he coaches teams previously. This is not his footprint. footprint. This is the footprint of the players wanting to play an expensive game and having the trust to get out there and actually put it together. And boy, in those last two games, the one against Ireland and the one against France, we really, really saw that. And I think this is a great thing for world rugby. And as a result of that, we've seen some changes in the English team. And I wanted to talk about some of those players that I thought have added some real value and spice to the way that England want to play the game. And I'm going to start off with Furbank. And even though that he only played seven minutes in this last game against France, I think he is the solution that England have been looking for at fullback. And uh, Freddie Stewart, no doubt about it, a good fullback, good under the high ball, brings in that uh, defensive element. But I think Furbank is the man that's going to give England another attacking option in the back line. And we've seen that in the games that he's played. So it's unfortunate that he had to go off, replaced by Marcus Smith. I'll talk about him in a minute. So yeah, I think Furbank has cemented his position for now in this English team. And I think taking him to New Zealand to play against the All Blacks is going to be a great experience for him. And uh, I think England need him in that team as well to play the All Blacks down under. Now outside uh, or outside playing with him was Freeman, of course, coming into the series for England. I really enjoyed watching him play. I think he's got a lot of potential. This guy he scored some good tries throughout the campaign. He was good in this last game against France. And uh, he's an attacking weapon, and he's one of these players that looks a little bit underrated. But boy, he's got some pace. He knows how to beat a, beat a defence. And uh, he showed that in the games that he played. So something else we learned about England is they've got another winger here that can do some real damage. And the other winger I want to talk about didn't play in this last game, Faye Waibaso. And uh, I think he needs to be starting for England. I've talked about this in previous videos. England need to have that potential weapon on their starting team. Whilst Elliot Daly did really well, plays well, he's a man to come off the bench and try and make a difference in the back end of these games for England. So I think with Freeman and Faye Waibaso in there for England, starting for this English team, I think that's the way that we need to move forward. And I hope Steve Borthwick does that when they go down to New Zealand. Now, the next man I want to talk about in the England team is George Ford. Yes, they're number 10. I've been a little bit critical of George Ford in the past. I thought he was one-dimensional, too much kicking. But when England have changed their tactic and looked at moving the ball, George Ford has been able to slot into that position and offer that distribution platform that's much needed. And the, the fact that we've seen Ollie Lawrence score a number of tries now in the last couple of games mean that Ford is doing his job in terms of getting that ball on from number 10. So having him there with his kicking abilities in addition to this new way that England's playing, I've changed my opinion on George Ford and I think he is the right man at number 10 right now for England in terms of this style of play that they're trying to play. So well done George Ford, you've got this Kiwi to change his mind about you. And uh, well played in the last game as well, 11 points for England, played very well in that game against France. and. 
Something else we learned about in this series for England, particularly in the last two games, George Martin coming on and playing in the locking position and starting the game for England. What a fine George Martin is, a beast of a man doing very, very well. Had a specific turnover in this last game where Crew got the better of him, but don't worry about that. I think Martin starting in the locking position for England is a masterstroke for England. He's a fantastic player. He's only going to get better. And again, getting him down under to play the All Blacks, it's going to give him that experience. And also playing South Africa later on in the year as well. And then we can't talk about England without talking about Ben Earl, of course. What a series he had. He got better and better as each game went on, I thought. He's really alive again after that Rugby World Cup last year. We saw Ben Earl at his very best, I think, against Ireland and against France. He's very, very dangerous when he gets into open play. We saw him do a couple of breaks in each of those games where he took off down the field and really showed his talent, his pace, and his ability to beat the defence as well. But it's his breakdown work that's so pivotal in this English team. And combining with Chisholm and Underhill, I think England have found a back three that's going to work really, really well for them going into the future. So Ben Earl back to his best and gets a very high rating for me in this last two games that England played in the Six Nations this year. And then we can't talk about England without talking about Marcus Smith, of course. And he came onto this game as a fullback replacement for Furbank after seven minutes of the game. So he got to play most of the game. And uh, he's a bit of an enigma, isn't he, Marcus Smith? He can do some fantastic things. But I watched closely and uh, he defensively was pretty poor in those two tries of France where the two wingers got uh, past him and beat him, his defensive mindset on those occasions didn't bring those two French players down. I'm not blaming him for the tries, but uh, he didn't come up with those defensive tackles when England needed them. So maybe something to question mark about Marcus Smith's ability in the number 15 jersey. But uh, for me, he's coming off the bench. He can cover 10. He's a utility back. He can go into 12 as well, and he can go to fullback. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is the future for Steve Borthwick using Marcus Smith in this capacity. From what I've just said about George Ford, I don't see Marcus Smith starting at number 10, particularly when England are playing like this with George Ford in the team. There's no need to upset the apple cart and put Smith in there for what could be a show of brilliance every now and again. But with George Ford, you've got somebody that can go 70 or 80 minutes and give you the same deliverable high standard in every game. And I think that's something that England need to build on as they continue to build this platform and this new style of play. So as I said in, the, in relation to the statistics of this game, it was pretty even when it came to the forwards. I think England are going to have to do some work because up against the All Blacks in South Africa later in the year, they're going to come up against two packs. They're going to really, really take it to them. So I'm not saying this French pack didn't take it to them. They did, and it showed that England still have some work to do, I believe, in the set piece. So their scrum needs to get stronger. Their line-out needs to become more efficient, particularly later in the game. We've seen this throughout the Six Nations competition. Teams that are doing bad throw-ins to line-outs in the last 10 minutes, it's cost them dearly. And this is a thing that uh, coaches need to put a mindset into each of the players. So that's something England needs to go away and work on, I think, in terms of making sure that those set pieces late in the game when the reserves are on the field are just as critical as they are in the first 10 minutes of the game. So a lot to uh, work on there, I think, for England before they go down under. One of the things that I didn't like after the game was the press conference that England gave Steve Borthwick and Jamie George, both saying that uh, England didn't lose the game. They simply ran out of time. They would have scored next and won the game. And we've seen this uh, level of arrogancy, I would call it, a couple of times now in the Six Nations. We saw it from Gregor Townsend after the Irish game. And we've seen Warren Gatlin also not being such or showing such good sportsmanship. It's something that we don't need in the game. And uh, we need to be more humble and appreciative of the performance. Uh, France had to step up, get that penalty. Thomas Ramos had all the pressure in the world. He got the goal over. He won the game for France. England didn't have an opportunity to score again. And that was the way the game ended. And I think England need to show some more sportsmanship, particularly from their captain and from their head coach. But as I said, it wasn't isolated to them. We saw it a number of times from different captains and different coaches across the Six Nations. I think it's time for that to change and uh, for people to be appreciative of the level of play that we're seeing from some of these teams. And let's face it, if a team comes back and beats you in the last minute and they're being able to withstand that pressure, then they deserve to win the game. 
that's how I see it anyway. Let me know in the comments what you think about that one. So there we go. There's my summary of the game between France and England, how I've seen them so far in the Six Nations campaign, right through to the end of the campaign, of course. I think both teams are back. I think France are playing fantastic sponta, uh, spontaneous rugby, and that's what we love about France. England have got this new style of play. It's all now about consistency. They need to be able to take this to New Zealand and be successful down under. It's going to surely set up a fantastic series against New Zealand. Two test matches, the first one in Dunedin in the beginning of July and then a week later at Fortress Eden Park in Auckland. That's going to be an outstanding series. I think it's about 109 days until that series kicks off. So we can all start getting a little bit excited. But I think this English team playing this style of rugby is going to be very welcomed in New Zealand and they're going to give the All Blacks a hard time if they're able to play like this for 80 minutes. It's going to be an outstanding series down under. As far as France go, I think Fabien Gaultier has ended the Six Nations campaign a lot happier than he was after the first couple of games. And to think that Dupont and Intermac are going to come back into this team at some stage soon, then I think it's going to be very, very exciting for France. So as I said, expect them to be hovering in that top three or four of world rugby for the rest of this year. I think they're going to do very well against the Southern Hemisphere teams when they travel to Europe in the autumn time. And uh, I think France are going to cause a couple of upsets. That's what I think so far of this. And it's good to see they've got these new forwards that are doing wonderful stuff for them. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comments about this, about the players I mentioned, maybe some of the players I didn't mention. Were you surprised by some of the statistics in this last game between France and England played, and played at Lyon? Or were they pretty much as you expected them to be? I'm going to be back again soon right here on Inside Rugby with plenty more comment, uh, content on rugby around the world. So if this is for you, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Give this video a bit of a thumbs up and help me out with all these YouTube algorithms. And I'll see you again really soon from beautiful sunny Cancun in Mexico. Until next time, it's time for me to go and get a taco. So I'll see you all again very soon. Bye for now.